The principles I'm referring to today are foundational, fundamental principles that guide our Christian lives. But when we examine the way we react to the issues of life that come our way, it often exposes that these very principles are not in place in our hearts. Let me begin today's message by congratulating you for choosing to give your time to do something to build your spiritual life. <laughs> yes, because I, I have spoken to many people who have made a similar complaint. They've said, I get so busy, busy with my work, busy with, with family responsibilities, busy with my children, busy with relationships, busy with this. I'm so busy that I find it difficult to have time for my Bible, have time for prayer, have time for my spiritual life. And I put it to you today that if such a complaint has ever rung in your heart, oh, where do I find the time? To build my spiritual life, I would say to you this. It is not time that you lack. It is desire. Because you create time for the things you really desire. You, you create time for the things you really value. If you recognize that your life actually depends on something, then you have no alternative but to create time for it. <laughs> so I want to thank you once again for choosing to spend your time at this moment to receive the word of God, to build your spiritual life. And I pray that the message you receive today will strengthen your thirst and hunger for the living word of God. I pray that this service today would empower you spiritually to maintain a rightful focus on God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. So, People of God, without much further ado, I want to take you to the Word of God. I want you to turn in your Bibles. I hope you have your Bibles with you, people of God. I hope you have the Word of God with you. <laughs> That's the reason we're here. Please turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20 is the scripture I want to focus on today. And I'm going to read specifically from verses 22 to 32 but let me just give a bit of bit of context before before we we read together right now let me give a bit of context this is the words of apostle paul we know apostle paul is a great example of faith and an inspiration to us as believers and in this particular message he called for the elders from the city of ephesus to come to where he was and he recognized that this was the very last time he would ever speak to them. God prophetically revealed to him that his time was short. And he told the elders of Ephesus openly, look, this is the last time you will see me. So I want you to take notes of that context because if you know that you are going to deliver a message to someone, and this is the last message they will ever hear from you. You can realize how important, how significant, how valuable that message is. So the words of Apostle Paul in this scripture are very important and contain vital keys that I believe will help you in your spiritual life. So let's read together. Uh, I'm going to read from verse 22. I encourage you in your spare time to read the whole chapter. <laughs> it's a fantastic and a, a very thought-provoking message. It's a serious message, but it's important that we take our time to read things that can provoke our hearts to things of eternity, not just the material things of this world. So let's read. Verse 22, Paul says this. 
and see now I go bound in the spirit to Jerusalem not knowing the things that will happen to me there except that the Holy Spirit testifies in every city saying that chains and tribulations await me but none of these things move me I, li- I like the words of Apostle Paul. He said, none of these things move me. None of them. Nor do I count my life. Nor do I count my own life dear to myself. <laughs> what a word of faith. So that I may finish my race with joy. And the ministry which I receive from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel of the grace of God. And indeed, now I know that you all among whom I have gone preaching the kingdom of God will see my face no more. Therefore, I testify to you this day that I am innocent of the blood of all men, for I have not shunned to declare to you the whole counsel of God. Therefore, verse 28, take heed to yourselves and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. Also from among yourselves, men will rise up speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after themselves. Verse 31, therefore, watch, therefore, watch and remember that for three years, I did not cease to warn everyone night and day with tears. Finally, verse 32. So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. Wow, (laughs) may God God bless his word in our hearts as we want to take time to ponder on, 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 on this message from Apostle Paul. Now, I want to emphasize three principles today, and I believe this will, first of all, encourage all of us, but it will help us to maintain our relationship with God. Because, you know, if, if, if here at God's Heart TV, if we are to look at the, uh, the messages we receive from people, whether it's through, you know, people sending us emails, uh, people writing to us on, on WhatsApp or text messages or phone calls, just name it. If we had to look at the messages we receive, I would say about 92 to 95% of people who reach out do so because they have a prayer request. I, I need prayer. I have this challenge. Maybe it's challenge in health or challenge in career or challenge in marriage or challenge in, in family. They, they say, I need prayer. I'm people of God. What a privilege, what a joy, what an honor to to be in a position to pray for you in the name of Jesus. It's a great joy and we are ready to continue to pray for you and to pray with you. But I want you to understand something. In this journey of life, situations will always come. Being a Christian, being close to God does not remove that reality. So as much as we are ready to pray for you in the name of Jesus, to declare the living word of God over your situation, to stand with you in faith concerning the desires of your heart that you're bringing to the Lord. I want to emphasize this today. Don't just connect Don't just be part of these services because of this problem or that situation or this issue or the challenge in the family or what's happening in the country or my work or or my job. Connect primarily because of your spiritual life, your relationship with God. That's the most important thing. 
Because situations will continue. Challenges will continue. If prayer request A is answered, very soon prayer request B will come. That's part of our journey of life. So, three principles. If you have a pen and paper, you can write them down. And it's a point of reflection, a point of meditation from, from the scripture we have just read. And I will go through and, and emphasize and explain to you, but three principles. Number one, you must value your relationship with God above everything else. Number two, you must cultivate an attitude of prayer and watchfulness. Number three, you must recognize the word of God as the source of spiritual growth. The principles I'm referring to today are foundational, fundamental principles that guide our Christian lives. And I believe that as you're hearing these things, there are things that you've heard before. I'm not emphasizing new, new things that perhaps you've never heard before. But when we examine the way we react to the issues of life that come our way, it often exposes that these very principles are not in place in our hearts. And I want to use the case of Apostle Paul to explain more about this and to encourage us about this. So uh, let, let's, let's jump back on that book of Acts 20. Let, let me quickly take note of something that Paul says in verse 23. He says, the Holy Spirit testifies in every city saying, Chains, Whew. chains and tribulations await me. Now, that's not a nice message to hear. If we attend the, the house of God, <laughs> we, we, we often like to hear messages saying things like, when you go to this city, I declare that breakthrough awaits you. I declare that promotion awaits you. I declare that prosperity awaits you and, and favor awaits you. And of course, these are blessings from God. But I want you to take note. The Holy Spirit testified, witnessed to Apostle Paul, that what awaited him was trouble, tribulation, difficulty. In his case, physical imprisonment. Now, we cannot compare ourselves with Apostle Paul. I mean, we all know the unique nature of his calling. We know the, the unique calling God revealed to him how he would suffer for the sake of the gospel. And we, we, we read in the Bible the accounts of his life and the great things he did for God and the great persecution he endured. So I'm not in any way saying that this is going to be the case for all of you connected here today. I'm just making a very simple point that the Holy Spirit testified to Paul that trouble awaited him. Not necessarily promotion or blessing or breakthrough or this or that. Trouble, tribulation, imprisonment. What does this mean? Very simply, as Christians, God oftentimes allows us to pass through difficulties for a purpose known to him. It's part of our Christian journey. If we come to Christ with an expectation that such things do not await us. We easily set ourselves up for disappointment or misunderstanding or frustration when we encounter such things. But whatever God has called you to do, whatever your destiny is as a Christian, you know, as I said, Apostle Paul's calling was very unique. But we must recognize that part of this journey involves trials, tribulations that the Holy Spirit permits, allows, prepares us for. Take notes of this. Now, verse 24 
is the heart of this message. Uh, it's verse, verse 24 and verse 32 are the two verses I'm really going to emphasize today. But let's read verse 24 again. Apostle Paul said this, referring to those chains, those tribulations, troubles, difficulties, just name it. He said this, none of these things move me. Is what you are going through moving you? Apostle Paul said this powerful statement because of the strength of his faith, the strength of his conviction. He said, none of these things move me. Now, what do I mean when I say, is your situation moving you? Is your situation moving you out of God's will? Is your situation moving you out of joy? Is your situation moving you to act out of character, fall into complaints or grumbling or or lamenting or comparing yourself with others? Why is this happening to me as I'm a Christian? Why is this happening to, to, to my family after all that we've done? Is that situation you are going through moving you? It's a point of self-examination. It's a point of reflection. Now, let's look at the next word of Apostle Paul. He said, none of these things move me. None of these things move me. Nor do I count my life dear to myself. That's a very serious statement, people of God. (laughs) Very serious statement. Nor do I count even my own life Dear to myself that I may finish my race with joy. The next question I pose to you is this. Is there anything in your life that you count as more dear to you than your relationship with God? I'll ask that question again. Is there Anything in your life that you count, you consider, you you value as more dear to you than your relationship with God. Because if something happens to that thing, it will affect your joy and move you out of faith. The principle I'm emphasizing to you here is this. Nothing was able to move Apostle Paul. Nothing was able to separate him from the love of God. We know that famous scripture in Romans 8 verse 39. He says, nothing, nothing can separate me from the love of God. Why? Because he compared nothing to his relationship with God. He placed God above every other thing in his heart. That's why nothing disturbed his joy. Nothing affected his peace. Nothing interrupted his spiritual life. Yes, tribulations awaited him. Yes, chains awaited him. Yes, even death awaited him. But nothing could move him. If something can move you, it reflects that you have placed something above God in your hearts. People of God, I said, I know I said today is a word of encouragement, but it is also an opportunity to challenge ourselves in the lights of God's word. If something can move you out of joy, if something can move you out of peace, if something can move you to act out of character, move you to complaint, move you to grumble, move you to lamenting, move you to unhealthy comparison, it shows you have placed something as more dear to you than God. I can give maybe like a very simple example. 
before we move to the next points, you know, Apostle Paul here is referring to himself, his own life. But for, for many of us, it can just be a simple thing, a, a material thing. Perhaps you have, you have a car that you, 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 you love so much, you, you value so much, you, you take care of so much. I'm not saying that's bad, there's nothing wrong. I'm talking about priorities here. If you love your car so much, and maybe you are driving and something happens, accidents, or someone hits you, or something happens that damages the car, what happens to that car will likely disturb your joy, likely disturb your peace, likely move you to anger, or move you to provocation, or move you to take an action that contradicts your faith as a Christian. Because you have placed too much value on a material thing, the very thing that happens to affect your faith in God, that shows that you have placed something above God in your heart. Well, I'm just talking about a material thing, like a, a car. In the same vein, sometimes we have placed our relationships with others above our relationship with God. That's why if someone disappoints us, we behave, behave as if the world has come to an end. If someone disappoints us, we easily lose faith, easily give up, easily become bitter, easily become frustrated because we've given even more value to our relationship with someone than our relationship with God. Or perhaps we have lost a loved one. People of God, yes, of course, in this journey of life, one destiny that unites all of us is death. No matter who you are, no matter your status or stature or position or possessions in life, death awaits all of us. And sometimes when we experience the loss of a loved one, the way we respond shows that we have placed more value on that person than even our relationship with God. Now, People of God, I'm not saying that we will not grieve if, if a loved one dies. Of course we will. We're humans. I'm simply emphasizing to you this principle that we should place our relationship with God above everything and anything. And how do we know that we have placed our relationship with God above those things? The way we react to life's issues the way we react to life's tribulations, the way we react to, to the grief of the loss of a loved one, the way we react when we face that situation in, in health or business, career, the way we react when something happens to something we hold dear, whether it's an, a material item or a loved one, family member, just name it. We should not love anything above God because whatever you love above God will become a source of disturbing your joy. Because joy, real joy, true joy, can only come from God. There's no other source of joy. <laughs> Genuine peace in this world outside of God. So uh, uh, let me jump to another point about Apostle Paul. I, I hope people of God, this message today gives an opportunity for self-examination. Self-examination in the lights of God's word. Because we must not just approach the Bible as if it is a book of ancient history or something that happened millennia ago. The living word of God is the blueprint for our lives today. And when we read the word, we must apply those principles into our daily lives. Okay, this is what happened to Apostle Paul. In my case, how do I react? Does something move me? Do I hold anything as more dear to me than my relationship with God? We must examine our own lives in the lights of that word. Now, continuing verse 24, Apostle Paul says, so that I may finish my race with joy. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Joy. We need joy for the journey. Joy that comes from God. Joy that can only come springing from a, a relationship with God. If something disturbs your joy, check yourself. If something affects 
your joy. Check yourself. You have placed something above God in your hearts. Now, Apostle Paul says that I may finish my race with joy and the ministry which I receive from the Lord Jesus to testify to the gospel and the grace of God. Why, why am I emphasizing this? Because as Christians, I mentioned earlier that we can all compare ourselves to Apostle Paul in terms of the unique nature of his calling. But every Christian is called to be an evangelist. I'm not necessarily meaning to uh, preach the word, you know, publicly in the churches or on the streets. Some people may have that calling, glory be to God. But every Christian is called to witness for the good news through word and action. And Apostle Paul is an example. We read in the Bible that, that he was also a tent maker. That's how he took care of his needs. He, he had that vocation. But we know about him because of his zeal for the gospel and how he proclaimed the good news. Now, why am I saying this? Because it's so easy to get caught up in the busyness of our daily life and work and family and this, that we often forget the purpose why we are created. We are created for the glory of God. And as Christians, we are called to be lights to those in darkness, to shine lights through words and actions. It may not necessarily be the same way you see me today, preaching the gospel like this, in, in, in a form of this nature. Some of us may be called to that, but everyone is called to witness for the gospel, to proclaim the gospel of God's grace. Whether it's a simple word of encouragement to someone at your workplace, whether it's a smile to someone that you see is looking depressed or discouraged, whether it's sending a simple link through WhatsApp to your friend who's going through hard times with a word of encouragement or encouraging them to participate in an interactive prayer. We are all called to proclaim Claim the gospel of God's grace. And I think that your situation, whatever it is you may face, loses its grip to disturb your joy when you recognize your purpose is bigger than yourself. I will say that again. You are called for a purpose that is bigger than yourself. We are created for the glory of God. We must never lose sight of that because of our situation or because of the human responsibilities that surround us that so easily take our time and our attention and our focus and our interest. We must remember the bigger picture to proclaim the good news through word and action. Now, I'm going to jump a few verses ahead. Remember those three points I talked about. I talked about we must value our relationship with God above everything else. And the way we respond to the challenges and temptations of this journey reflect what we really value in our hearts Number two, I said we must cultivate an attitude of prayer and watchfulness. Watch and pray. You know this is the words of our Lord Jesus Christ in the Garden of Gethsemane because this flesh is weak, people of God. The flesh is weak. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. As you're hearing this word today, I believe so many of us in our hearts are our hearts are awakened. We are saying, yes, Brother Chris. Yes, I want to take more care of my spiritual life. Yes, I have that passion to share the good news. Yes, I'm not going to allow anything to disturb my joy. Yes, but when we, this message ends and we face the realities of our life and perhaps challenges at work or our children are misbehaving or we're having differences with our husband, our wife, sooner or later it's so easy for our focus to be diverted, for our focus to be shifted, and we get so consumed by the things, just the things of this world, the things around us, the issues of today, the issues of now. That's why, just as our Lord Jesus gave that word, watch and pray. Apostle Paul said the same thing in this final message to the elders of Ephesus. He said, watch, watch, guard yourself. At this point, let me also remind you 
that God's servant prophet TB Joshua, on the day he was called home to glory, do you remember his final words? You remember his final words? What did he say, people of God? Watch and pray. When I read this scripture, it actually reminds me of Prophet TB Joshua. Because as Apostle Paul was, was emphasizing this, knowing that his departure was close, emphasizing these principles, look, these are principles that will help you for the rest of your life. This is my final message to you. Take this message seriously. That is what he was saying. In the same way, that's what Prophet TB Joshua told us. Watch and pray. Watch and pray because it's so easy to become distracted. It's so easy to become discouraged. It's so easy to lose sight of that bigger picture I referred to, that we are created for a purpose bigger than ourselves, for the glory of God, to proclaim the gospel of God's grace in whichever area of life God has called us to. Look, I'm not just referring to those who are preaching from the pulpits or called into ministry. Are you, are you a businessman today? If you are a businessman through God, in that business, you can witness for him. When you do conduct your business honorably, when you conduct your business in the fear of the Lord, when you seize the opportunities the Lord gives you in that business to proclaim the good news, it's not just only those that are in the, the, the ministry that are to proclaim the good news. Everyone has that calling. Think about that. Now, verse 32. I love this verse. I love this word. Apostle Paul says, Brethren, I commend you to God. This is his, 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 his concluding statements. He says, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. People of God, there's no substitute. There's no alternative. The only source of spiritual growth is the word of God. If you desire to grow spiritually and you are not prepared to spend time in the word of God, you are deceiving yourself. The answer is here. The answer is in God's word. That's why if there's any message I can encourage you with today, it's to take your relationship with God seriously. How? By spending time daily reading your Bible. Daily. Just imagine if uh, physically you only ate foods once a, once a week on Sunday. Physically, what would happen to your body? You would, you would not be able to make it. Your body would be very, very sick and weak. And before you know it, if you continue like that, you would not be able to live for much longer. How much more so our spiritual life? Many of us are asking God for his mercy and favor to speak for us in our lives. But spiritually we are dead. Because we're not feeding ourselves. And we wonder why we are quick to get distracted or quick to lose focus or quick to, to become discouraged or quick to fall into the trap of comparison or, or quick to begin to seek alternatives outside of God when we face a challenge or temptation or we're quick to succumb to temptation because spiritually we're dead. We're not feeding ourselves. We're not taking the word of God into our hearts and making it part of us. And if you listen to this message today and say, hey, Brother Chris, it's true. What you're saying is true. I want to do the right thing, but so easily, my heart gets distracted or I get moved. My situation moves me. My situation disturbs my joy. My situation affects my relationship with God. If you realize that's true in your life today, there is no other answer outside of more time in God's word. Watch and pray time in God's word. 
If Apostle Paul, one of the greatest apostles in the history of the church, if that can be his conclusion in his final message to these people, he's about to depart and he says, these are my final words. How much more so should we take that word seriously? Watch and pray. Take time to receive the word of God into your hearts to refresh your spirits. So, people of God, as I bring this message today to a conclusion, I will repeat those three principles. Number one, number one, we must value, value our relationship with God above everything else in life. I'm not saying we should not value other things. Um, Of course, we, there's many things we must value. Of course, even my example earlier of the car or material things, I'm not saying you shouldn't look after those things or shouldn't be good stewards of them or shouldn't be good managers of them. I'm simply saying, don't compare them to God. If something happens to that thing, well, it will not disturb my relationship with God because I know he's the giver and I know he's in sovereign and ultimate control. To a man of faith, nothing is lacking while everything is necessary. Good times, hard times, troubles, trials, temptations, everything serves a purpose. Recognizing God is aware of what you are passing through gives you no more ground for complaints. The ground for complaint is lost when you recognize God is aware. And as a Christian, each step of our journey, we believe God is aware. It's only when you you take a step out of his will that you open the door to a temptation that God has not permitted. But if you are within his will, whatever you face, he's aware. Where then is there room for something to move you, something to disturb your joy? We must value our relationship with God above everything else. Number two, we must cultivate that attitude of prayer and watchfulness. You know, I don't have much time to even go into what Apostle Paul was saying there about the the ravenous wolves that that he prophesied would come after his departure. You know, in our own lives, there are many wolves that are coming to try and distort the truth, try and take our hearts away from the truth of God's word, try and remove our focus from the word of God, try and distract us from our relationship with God, try to discourage us in our relationship with God. Being a Christian, the closer you draw to God does not mean these things disappear. It simply means we are are more aware because of we are watching, we are praying, we are quick to recognize, oh, the devil is trying to, to, to disturb my relationship with God. I refuse to give in to his lies. We are quick to recognize because we are spiritually alert. Watch and pray. And thirdly, we must recognize people of God, the word of God as the source for our spiritual growth. These principles, people of God, will help you. Take this word from Apostle Paul. Take it, reflect on it. When this service closes, don't just go straight back to your other activities. Take time to reflect on your own life. How can I apply this word? What habits can I create to encourage me in my spiritual life? What can I do to keep the word of God the priority in my life? There is no greater blessing I could give to you today than to share such a word.